In the last few videos, we have worked on creating a board module for our Tetris game. In this video, we're going to start adding a board to our state. Let's start by opening up our state module. We'll need to import the board module, so let's add that here at the top. I'm also going to expose the board type. Then, we'll add a board to our state record. Finally, let's add an empty board to our default state. Next, let's go ahead and update our view function to also render our board. We'll start by adding the tetromino that is falling to the board, so it will be rendered relative to the board rather than relative to the origin of the screen. Then, we'll turn it into a form. Finally, let's get rid of falling form and add our board form to our collage. Let's load up our state module. And we can see that the JP starts at the bottom left and slowly ticks downward. We're going to want to have our pieces start in the center of the board and just off the top of it. Let's go ahead and create a value called starting shift, which will move our tetrominoes up 20 rows and towards the center of the board. Then, let's go ahead and shift our J piece in our default state. Great! Our piece starts at the top and slowly descends. We can still move it out of bounds though, so let's work on that next. Let's write a function called useIfValid, which will take in the current state we are in, a new state we would like to use, and produces the new state if it is valid, otherwise it produces the current state. We'll use this isValid function we wrote in the board module to check our new tetromino and our new board. If it is valid, we produce the new one, else we simply produce our current state. Next, let's add it to our update function. We'll start by creating a use if valid prime, which is use if valid partially applied to our current state. We'll then call use if valid prime for each of our input results. Let's refresh. And now, when we try to move the tetromino out of bounds, we simply cancel the action and use our original state. Sweet. At this point, if you are a seasoned Tetris player like myself, you may have noticed that this prevents the piece from rotating when it is against a wall or against the bottom edge of the board. Modern Tetris games typically implement wall kicks and floor kicks. Let's go ahead and see if we can add those into our game. Let's start by writing a function called tryKicks. This function is going to take in a list of integer pairs to try shifting a tetronimo to, the current state, and the possible next state. It will then try kicking the tetromino in the next state using each of the shifts provided in the list. If it finds one that works, it will produce that state. If none of them work, it will produce the current state. Let's start by using a case expression to pattern match on our list of possible shifts. If it is the empty list, it means that there is nothing left to do, so we'll return the current state. Otherwise, we will match on the first element and the rest of the list. We will start by creating the shifted tetromino using our shift function with the first element of the list. Then, we will check to see if the board is valid if we use the shifted piece. If it is, we will return a record that is exactly like next state, except the falling tetromino will be the shifted one. Else, if the board is still not valid with the shifted tetromino, 
we will call try kicks with the remaining shifts and pass along our current state and next states. Next, let's write wall kick. It takes in the current state and the next state that we want and produces a state which will be our next state with a valid kick or our current state. When we are doing a wall kick, we can kick up to half our pieces width, left or right. We'll define a value range, which is half the size of the number of columns our falling tetromino occupies. Then, we need to get the possible shifts we could make. We can create a list between 1 and our range by using this special syntax. We can then call map to put them into a pair where the row is not shifted at all. Right now, our range is only for positive values, so let's go ahead and have this map to a list containing two pairs, one for the positive shift and one for the negative shift. Then, we'll replace map with concat map, which will concatenate all of the maps it produces into a single list. Finally, let's call try kicks with our shifts and pass in our current and next state. Let's add this to our update function. We'll start by pulling out our rotated state. Then we'll create a value next state, which we'll use if our rotated state is valid. We then need to check if we need to try and wall kick. I'll create a value called the next state prime. If the next state is equal to the state we were initially given, then we will try a wall kick. Else, we will keep the next state. Finally, we'll return our next state prime. Let's load it up. And now, you can see we can even rotate if we're against the walls. The next thing to do is to write floor kick. It has the same type as our wall kick function. When we are doing a floor kick, the tetromino is allowed to be shifted up to half its height upward. We'll get this from the falling tetromino's rows. Let's now construct the shifts that are possible. In the case of floor kicks, we only kick upwards. So we can take our list and simply map it to a pair where our row is shifted. We don't have to worry about the negative values. And then we'll call try kicks with shifts, and again, pass on our current and next state. Finally, in the update function, let's go ahead and add a next state double prime. If next state prime is equal to our original state, then we will try floor kicking with our rotated state. Else, we will pass on our next state prime. And let's test it out. Go ahead and move this piece all the way to the bottom. Sweet! Our tetromino now kicks off the walls and the floor. Next time, we will continue by talking about how to create random tetrominoes.